Hey there, Illini Nation. I'm Ryan Baker. Welcome to our Fighting Illini Basketball Preview Show for the upcoming 2019-2020 season. After two seasons of laying the foundation, both head men's coach Brad Underwood and women's coach Nancy Fay are ready to start stacking some wins. Coming up on the show, Coach Underwood will tell me how the team is handling higher expectations for this coming year. And also we'll take a look at strength coach Adam Fletcher and how he's molding prize recruit Kofi Coburn into an even more sculpted body. But coming up next, Coach Nancy Faye will join me here in the studio, and she will talk about how the incoming freshman class will have a huge impact on the team's success. It's been a long road, but you know, I'm still fighting, I'm still staying strong with it. It's the best time of the year when you get to play. That's what we work for. Yeah, we're excited, but more importantly, we're willing to do the work this year daily, and you'll feel it from the energy from the players. I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. We're fighting for Lion Eye Nation, and we're fighting for each other. We're joined now by head women's basketball coach here at Illinois, Nancy Fay. Coach, always good to see you. Same back at you. Hard to believe you're starting year three here in Champaign. Has it just been a blur for you? It's moved really fast. I mean, I think the busyness of the seasons trying to get this thing rolling. Um, it is hard to believe it's year three. Laying the foundation as you try to build something is the heavy lifting, the hard work. As you start year three, do you envision or at least see some signs that the program you want to build here at Illinois is coming together? Actually, the signs were, you know, may have not gone as far as record wise, but the things that you don't see the development in those first few years actually were occurring. And I want to give credit to those early Illini because they never stopped fighting. And so those building of the culture um, sometimes do not translate in what you see as wins and losses. Even last year, we had several games, overtime losses to sure. Clemson, Indiana, mm -hmm. you know, had Northwestern late. Just getting over that hump of the belief of winning and that attitude is what we're working for. So in reality, we have been moving the needle, but like you said, we have to get some wins on the board, and that's, that's where we're moving to, and the accountability, and we understand that. Brandy Beasley's your leading returning scorer, but you've got some talented freshmen coming into this team that you're going to count on. Talk about uh, some of the newcomers, starting with your point guard out of Detroit, Janae. I mean, you're really going to look for a lot from her. Yeah, she's a 5'11 point guard, off guard that's extremely dynamic. One of the great things is when you have a kid that can create plays, I don't have to sit there and dictate every movement on the court. She can get it. She can create. Passes extremely well. And Janae Terry, does she bring some of that Detroit toughness too? Of course. Of course. <laughs> so you like yeah, that. Yeah. You need that edge, Well, right? the edge and the excitement and the energy. Because, you know, as much as this is hard work, it's got to be fun too. And she plays with a lot of fun. Any other youngsters that uh, will be counted on to contribute this you, season? You will see uh, Kennedy Miles from Cincinnati, Ohio, 6'1", 6'2", post player, can take the ball coast to coast, dynamic, another energy player. And then uh, Jada Peebles from North Carolina, 5'10", swing guard, shoots it long, can, can defend. Those three kids are going to give us a, a, another punch and a layer so that people can't quite as much uh, key on certain players on our team. Before practice, tell me about the positivity circle? Am I saying that correctly? Positive circle. Positive circle. Explain that. What, what's behind that? Sometimes when you go into gyms, you'll hear a lot of coaches talking and they're the only voice. And I think sometimes you miss out on what's going on in the world with your players. And so we just start off every day saying something that may have happened positive in their life. If you think about it, it just sets a tone for practice. Plus, I want to hear from my players every day. Uh, you know, every coach probably has meetings, but that daily, daily mm -hmm. contact, I think, is really, really important. So it's not just building the culture, it's building relationships. And when you have that, the bond, it's going to translate in the court and eventually add up to more wins than losses. And that's the two-year difference that you're seeing is that, you know, the, the third year, the, the players and I understand each other. There's been a lot mm -hmm. of meetings. There's been a lot of tough times. There's been a lot of ups and downs. But when you know your players, mm -hmm. I always say you can push your players. And then there's an understanding of accountability. I mean, I hold them accountable. And they have every right to hold me accountable. And when you get in that atmosphere and practice, it, it creates a lot of energy. 
your team had the opportunity to take a trip to Australia this past summer. Tell me how going down under is yeah. going to help your team go up well, moving forward. Well put. You know, <laughs> there, there's two aspects of every trip like that. One of my players said, Coach, we only had each other. There's obviously great things mm -hmm. to do, and it makes you grow in ways that you probably can't necessarily orchestrate at home. And then there's the playing aspect. I got a chance to look at three new players, mix them with our system, um, see what they could bring. We got a lot in in 10 days. So I think it was a, a really good thing for this team at this point. The 2019-20 season tips off on November 5th with Chicago State coming to Champaign. Coach, all the best this coming season. Appreciate it. We're back with more on our Fighting Illini basketball preview show. Welcome back to our Fighting Illini basketball preview show here with head men's basketball coach Brad Underwood. Coach, good to see you. Great to see you, Ryan. Year three on the job. Uh, I heard your Big Ten media day, and you sort of reminded me of Jay-Z. I guess you got your swagger back. Swagger <laughs> is the buzzword going into this 2019-20 season. And when I think about that, it's great to hear, but when the team here at Illinois under your watch has not experienced the success. How do you get that swagger when you haven't gone out and done it yet? We have a different feel about us. We have a different air. And I think part of that comes with, uh, with, with knowing that we've grown. Uh, you know, last year there was uh, so many challenges early. And um, this team persevered. They kept getting better. They kept working. They kept uh, their heads about them. Mm -hmm. They stayed uh, together. That allowed us to win in the Garden against Maryland. Mm -hmm. It allowed us to beat Michigan State uh, and, and continue to grow. And I feel like we're in a good place. We, we feel like the pieces of the puzzle are coming together very nicely. And, and now we're becoming an older team and with that a confident team. And, and, and hence the different feel, the different air, mm -hmm. the, 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 the swagger that we're carrying a little bit. You come into this season as sort of a darling, uh, like the, the sexy sleeper pick, upper division Big Ten, uh, Ayo Dosuma, who kind of maybe encapsulates uh, the theme of this team, unfinished business, deciding to come back for his sophomore season, first team preseason all Big Ten. A lot of accolades. Do you like the pressure that comes with that, trying to prove it? Yeah, it's it's not easy. You know, we're in the Big Ten, and we're in the best conference in, big in, in, in basketball. <laughs> And nobody lets you pass them. Mm -hmm. You have to go earn that. And, and that's our next challenge is, is we have to night in and night out, sustain a, a, a capacity to work and do that every day in practice. Uh, we've got to be that team that when we get punched in the mouth, mm -hmm. we, we stand right back up and, and start swinging again. And, and that's the, uh, uh, the, the thing I like about this team is, is now we know what it feels like to be punched. We mm -hmm. fought back. And now we have to do that on a consistent basis. You bring back a solid core with 11 returning players. I mean, you can have all the talent in the world, nothing beats experience. But when you have that core of Io, Georgie B, and Trent, and other players getting into their second and sometimes third year of college basketball, how has that made your job easier this preseason? Uh, we now have a, a, a sense of what's going on, mm -hmm. both offensively and defensively. Uh, so now we have veterans helping the young guys. They're not learning it themselves as they were last year. Last year, Io, Georgie, those guys were, they were, were still, still freshmen, they were still freshmen right. trying to grasp a new system and, and new concept. And, and uh, now with that number of guys back and the retention and now the continued growth to start working on other things and tightening things up, so to speak. Well, Coach, we're not done with you yet. Coming up on our basketball preview show, we'll show you how strength coach Adam Fletcher is sculpting the already chiseled body of one of Coach Underwood's prize recruits. Coach, uh, when I was down before practices started and you guys are doing preseason workouts, one thing that struck me is, I mean, all your guys are beach ready. I mean, it, it was <laughs> September, early October. They looked like they were ready for the beach. They look in great shape. And a lot of that credit goes to your strength coach, Adam Fletcher, one of the best in the business. Yeah, we had a lot of guys running around with their shirts I mean, off everybody, I mean, it's, I was uh, a little embarrassed. Man. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, it, no, we're, we're fortunate. I don't know how you rank strength coaches. I know we've got the best. And, uh. Uh, his attention to detail, former player, uh, and and the job he does, not just with 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 our veterans, but the changes that he makes in an eight week time frame, from the start of when young man really steps transforming in foot. their body. Oh, it's 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 light years. Well, one of your newcomers generated a lot of buzz here on campus is <clears throat> Kofi Colburn, and I don't know if it's Jamaican food or the jerk chicken, but he looks like he was cut from a rock, and now he's getting in the weight room with Fletch. One thing we want to show you here is how Adam Fletcher 
has really transformed and is transforming the already sculpted body of big seven footer Kofi Coburn. The first, the first assessment was um, we got him on the force plates and we were seeing, you know, how well, how explosive he was, how well he moved. Um, but one of the things that we noticed was how much force he absorbed on landing um, at 14,000 newtons. It was, it was 10,000 greater than some of our guys on landing. So uh, figuring out how we could get him in better shape and get him to run better um, with decreasing the amount of, of force that he was having on his joints was really important to us. At first, coming in, I, like, I just viewed it as, as too much, and like, I always used to like cry about, complain about it to myself, but after you start seeing like the reward and what you get, what you gain from it, like my fitness level going up, and like my body changing, I started appreciating it, and then things just started getting better. I started like appreciating Flex, started working harder, started being more dedicated. So the Alter G treadmill was, was huge for that. Uh, we can unweight his body, uh, we started him out at 60% of his body weight and, and kind of worked him to, towards where he was running at more of his body weight. But again, it was just getting that cardio and that conditioning capacity down while he was at 60% of his body weight. So we could get extra work in, but not put the pounding on his joints. It was a big tool for us in helping him become a better runner, but also to lose the weight that he needed to lose to get him to be able to perform on the court the way he's performing right now. After I started working on this, the zero gravity, I, I just felt like Whenever I would run, because you could reduce the back, the body weight to a certain percentage. So whenever I would run on that, like after I finished, I would always feel like I could go again. And like it's really good on your knees, it's good on your legs, and it just, it, you're doing you basically doing the same sprints for the same amount of time, but it's less damage on your legs and your body. I used to view fitness as like just being able to run for a long period of time until a flesh changed my mind, and he showed me that what fitness really is is just being able to go maximum. At your, at, your full, at your best, at your best for a certain amount of time, and then recovering fast enough to go right back at it again. And we, we see it with a lot of guys. And someone of his size, who's dominated the way he's dominated through his career, it was challenging to get him to understand that this was going to be a different level, and that he was going to have to be in better shape and be able to repeat effort at a high level because he didn't understand that right away. So it was a combination of seeing it in practice, going against guys like Georgie. Um, every day and, and seeing that, man, I, maybe I do need to change something. He's as gifted physically as anyone we have, um, meaning he can win sprints. He's got one of the highest verticals on the team, but he's 285 pounds. And to find a guy like that with that type of gift and, and physically, I've never seen it before. Um, I don't know who you compare him to that's currently playing. I don't think there's anyone like him. He's one of the most special athletes that I'll probably ever get to work with. I mean, Fletcher's really determined and like, he pushes you, but he also knows how to like, how to treat different players. He knows how to approach you. He changes your mindset. He's really, he's great outside of the, the, um, the weight room. Like he talks to me a lot. He tries to get me to be a leader. He tries to, so he always wants to bring out the best in us. And like, you just gotta appreciate stuff like that. And that's formed the relationship with me and him in which I trust him. And I just believe that everything he's doing for me is gonna be for the greater good. I can't wait to see him go against somebody else. I think our guys are tired of going against him. Um, I, I, there's, there's days where I feel bad for Georgie and Jermaine and uh, uh, Zach Griffith. And it's unfortunate that they have to go against him every day because he is so big. Um, and I can't wait to see him go against somebody else. And I know our guys can't wait to see him go against somebody else. We're back with head coach Brad Underwood here on our Fight of the Line Eye basketball preview show. Coach, you have the title of head coach, but it's truly a team effort with your staff in the on-court preparation, recruiting, everything involved in running the basketball program, uh, starting with Orlando Antigua, Ron Chin Coleman. You have Stephen Gentry, who has been on your staff in previous stops. He's rejoining you here in Champaign. And Jamal Walker, who's been, been around in these parts a long time, shifting to a new role on your staff with Jeff Alexander. Let's start with those two guys and talk about being the assistant to the head coach, how important they are to you. Well, they're, they're huge. And, and one of the great challenges that we have as a head coach is we have, we have so many responsibilities. Now with, with Jeff uh, handling the offense, Jamal handling the defense, they're working with me every day and watching film. And, and what we're trying to do is eliminate the slips. So I'm excited about both those guys. They're wonderful, wonderful basketball minds. They're both gonna be head coaches. Orlando Antigua has been a head coach. He has a lot of experience. What does he bring to the table? Well, Orlando's one of the best recruiters in the country, uh, plain and simple. And, and 
Uh, I enjoy being around Orlando on the road because you, uh, uh, you talk about a magnetic personality. He's a, he's a guy that um, everybody likes. You see why he was a Harlem Globetrotter for seven years. <laughs> yep. His, uh, uh, his knowledge of, of, of the game, his understanding of, of different areas of the country to go recruit and the world because he's been so and many places. he knows places. where the best food joints are too. Though. He's got the food joints <laughs> down. He's and, got all and, that. And uh, especially in New York City. He, sure. he always knows a guy. Oh, he knows a guy. He's got a guy. But right now, let's take a closer look at Big O. Good talk. Good talk. You were gone. Big step. There ain't no big step. Pursue it with two hands. Good man. Good man. Sprint. Sprint. Now turn. Now turn. Finish your breakfast. Good. Good. Good in the gap. Live guard. Good. Trent. Good. Trent. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Was that an actual, like, Mozgov? Huh? Hey, hey. Was that a Mozgov train just right? Huh? It was a, it was a Mozgov block. So I know you can do it now. Coach, his name is Ryan Coleman, but I don't think anybody – on the planet calls him that he's just Chin. <laughs> I haven't called him Ron since he's been here. I just call him Chin. Everybody knows Coach Chin. Uh, you know, great personality, but a brilliant basketball mind. Tell me a little bit more about Chin. Well, and again, a guy that is, is has has grown up through the ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done it at every level. Started at the middle school level, the AAU level, uh, at the high school level. Uh, worked his way up in different various roles through the through the college ranks and. Uh, uh, a tremendous communicator with young guys, a guy that uh, uh, has a lot of a lot of ties in the city of Chicago. He's but homegrown, it, yeah, yeah. But his recruiting goes well beyond that. He's not a a, a, a one stop guy, so to speak. A uh, very good basketball mind, and one of the up and coming uh, uh, coaches in in America. Here he is, Chin Coleman. You have to see that from the wing. Anytime we got Kip, George, any of those guys on the second cut of post up, you want to be patient to get the two man game. And then you got to say something. You see, you, you got an opportunity for a second cut of post up. Austin, Austin, Austin. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, yes, we win. We won. No foul, Io. Yes, come on, fight, Tyler. Fight. Good. Good. Listen, Io. We're in transition. Good. Say, Io, stay. Still here. Still here. Still here. Yes. Rebound that. Good move. Good move, boss. Hey, that's a big 10 move right there. Oh, you know, they from the West Coast. San Francisco, Silicon Valley, yeah, Silicon Valley. But I'm, I'm, I don't know, you got a Big Ten move right here. Maybe you're starting to figure it out, boss. Been hanging around me a little bit, starting to, yeah, starting to rub off. Now on to your third top assistant, Stephen Gentry, who you go way back with. He was actually here for a brief stint in Champaign when you first arrived, but now he's here we hope for the long haul. Stephen Gentry, you and you and I, you and he, I should say, are really joined at the hip, aren't you? Yeah, there's there's so much familiarity, and and he was a part of, of of, of helping me build it at at, at SFA. Uh, he had the opportunity to go back to Gonzaga, uh, which is his alma mater, mm -hmm. and and uh, of course they've achieved great success the last two years. And uh, the opportunity to come back and to get Stephen back here. Uh, a wonderful teacher of the game, a guy that has outstanding uh, mind and and um, a diligent worker, and and I'm excited to have him as 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 a guy who's back on our staff and uh, uh, working with him every day. Probably always nice to have a fresh set of eyes and a new voice with the team. We introduce you to Stephen Gentry. So guys, hey, let's start bonding around that goal. Absolutely. Defensively, hey, they're getting one tough shot now. One tough one shot tough now. Out. Okay, that's that's like almost like our identity here on the defensive end. Good, good. Hey, tough shot. On the side, almost like a hand fix. Hand and back. Hand and back. No strong side piece. I know, but you, the guard's helping you over the top. There's no help. There's no help on the low side. Yes, you're lower than him. Oh. 
Fire, 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 fire. Hands, 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 hands. Yes. Yes. Go. Big time. That's it. Well, we've talked about swagger and strength. Now it's time to show and prove. Both the men and women's Fighting Illini teams tip off the season on November 5th at the State Farm Center. I'm Ryan Baker. Thanks for watching our preview show. Until the next time, go Illini.